Anita Ulefi, a researcher in musculoskeletal physiotherapy at the University of the Witwatersrand, Johannesburg, South Africa. Let's have a look at the value and the key features of randomized controlled trials. For the purposes of this session, we will refer to a randomized controlled trial or RCT as a trial. Trials are used to determine the effect of an intervention. For example, say we want to find out if eating chocolate makes one run, run faster. In other words, does eating chocolate reduce the time taken to complete a five kilometer fun run? So let's do a trial to determine the effects of chocolate on running performance in endurance runners in the Kalahari. In a trial, the participants are divided in two or more groups through a process called randomization. Commonly, trials have got two groups, so for the purposes of this example, we'll divide our participants into two groups as well. Through randomization, we ensure that each group contains a fairly similar distribution of known and unknown factors. For example, if our trial's inclusion criteria specifies that we include participants male and female between the ages of 18 and 65, then those are the known factors. However, there may be unknown factors that may influence findings which we are unaware of, or maybe we just haven't thought about it, such as an insulin response or oxygen consumption. For this reason, it is important to divide the participants randomly into the two groups so that both the known and the unknown factors can be evenly distributed between the two groups. Participant groups then most often have similar characteristics at the start of the trial. However, it does happen that even after randomizing participants into groups, that the groups don't end up with exactly the same characteristics. But when our sample size is sufficient, we can be fairly confident that the groups are well balanced. So now, say we allow for this, these two groups to go through to the end of the trial period, but we don't give any of the group any interventions. Do you think that they will change or stay the same over a period of time? Our participants are a group of runners and as time goes by, one changes. Runners may change their biomechanics, their age, they become wiser. And the same goes for the clinical conditions. Most conditions are not stable, but they deteriorate over time as the disease progresses, such as cardiovascular disease. Or while on the other hand, participants who sustained an ankle sprain will most probably show improvement over time, even without any intervention. So the key to overcoming the natural progression or regression is known is knowing that both groups will undergo the same change. And here you can see that the participants indeed did manage to run faster without any intervention. Let's say around 25% run, run, run faster. But you can also see that the result is similar in both groups. Now imagine we apply an intervention to one of the two groups called the experimental group. We provide the one group with a standard size chocolate bar each morning. Imagine a chocolate bar before 9 a.m. in the morning. And we call the other group the control group. The control group will only get an education on how to be a better person, similar to what the experimental group will get, except that the experimental group will get a chocolate bar in addition to the education. Now imagine an education session on how to be a better person and that before 9 a.m. in the morning. I wonder if it will even pass through ethics. So both groups will be ex exposed to natural progression or regression, the usual training, and some of the being a better person education. But one group will get something that the other group won't, an early morning chocolate bar. Therefore, at the end of the trial, the experimental group's result in comparison to that of the control group tells us what the effect of the chocolate bar is on the time taken to complete the five kilometer fun run. So the difference between the groups is of value here, um, in that we can ascribe that difference to the effect of the intervention. And this is also called the between group difference. Remember that some people will start to run faster or slower because of the usual training and the education but this will, be, will happen in both groups. 
And as you can see here, 25% in the control group started to run faster, even though they did not receive any intervention, I mean, any chocolate bar specifically. But in the experimental group, 50%, four out of the eight participants, ran faster, which means that an additional two people ran faster as compared to the only two people in the control group. It is clear that it is really important to throw a control group into the mix. Uncontrolled trials where an intervention is applied to the one group only assumes that all the differences before and after the trial are as a result of the intervention and they don't take natural progression or the usual care into account. Unfortunately, not all trials implement or communicate these important design features. Just 38% of trials evaluating physiotherapy interventions contain six or more design features known to reduce bias or improve clinical decision making. We need to understand these design features and be able to identify them quickly in articles reporting trial results in order to select and understand the best trial to answer the clinical questions. So can you recognize a good trial a mile away? The PEDRA scale was designed through an in-depth consultation process with experts and helps users of the PEDRA database to quickly see which trials on the PEDRA database are internally valid and have sufficient statistical information so that results are interpretable. However, the PEDRA scale does not state whether a study's conclusions are valid or not. A study may get a high PEDRA rating and show a large treatment, treatment effect, but may not be clinically useful. So when interpreting a trial's findings, one should consider whether the treatment effect was big enough to be clinically worthwhile, whether the positive effects outweigh the negative effects, as well as the cost effectiveness of the treatment. We should also not blindly compare PEDRO scores between different subject areas, especially because it's not possible to satisfy all scale items in some areas of physiotherapy. Trials have certain key design features which reduces bias. Bias tends to exaggerate the size of the treatment effect, and we'll briefly touch on each of these. As explained earlier in this presentation, randomly allocating participants into groups is important to reduce a selection bias. By randomly allocating participants to groups, we give each participant an equal chance of being assigned to a group, be it the experimental group or the control group. You may read an article where the precise method is not stated. So as long as the article mentions that participants were randomly assigned to groups, then we are happy. Both coin tossing or dice rolling are acceptable methods to use, but there may also be other methods. For those who, with a research interest, go and play around on randomizer.org, a very useful tool. Another way to reduce selection bias is through concealed allocation of participants to groups. In our example, the person responsible for the allocation of the runners to the two groups may be a very kind person. Let's call him Simba. So Simba has his own belief system and assumes that the slightly overweight runners must like chocolate. So he's going to treat them by adding them to the experimental group. And this will cause the experimental group to have a heavier mean weight than the control group, which in the end may influence the outcome of the intervention. The idea is therefore for Simba to use either opaque envelopes, which contain the group allocation so that he does not know who goes into which group, or for Simba to be off-site so that he's not in contact with the participant, and that he therefore just send the next randomly allocated number to the study site, and they allocate the participant to that group. Another key feature of trials in an attempt to reduce bias, and in this case specifically performance bias, is through blinding of participants. If the participant, we'll call him Zazu, don't know whether he's in the treatment or the control group, he's considered blind. If we can create a chocolate bar without any active chocolate ingredients in it, a placebo chocolate bar, which looks, smells and tastes exactly like chocolate, then we'll be able to blind this participant. If Zazu knows that he's receiving real chocolate, you won't know if he runs faster due to the placebo effect 
or due to the active ingredients in the chocolate bar. Also, Zazu may want to run faster because he believes that this is what the researcher expects from the chocolate eating group. This is also called the Hawthorne effect. So if Zazu does not know whether he's eating active or placebo chocolate, in other words, does not know in which group he is, we can be certain that um, if he starts to run faster or slower, in that case, that it's really because of the intervention, namely the real chocolate bars we fed him. In physiotherapy, it is quite difficult to blind participants because of the complex interventions we commonly use. Think of the most typical ones, exercise versus education, strengthening versus stretching, breathing exercise versus running up and down a set of stairs. I can definitely see the difference between these modalities. So if it's not possible to blind participants, such as with sham acupuncture or an inactive laser machine, then we need to be aware that this bias is likely to exaggerate the treatment effects. So Simba was the one who allocated the runners to groups. Let's call the therapist who will do the treatment, Nala. If Nala does not know which group a participant is allocated to, then she is considered blind and performance bias is reduced. When one needs to dish out a real chocolate versus a placebo chocolate, then it's much easier to not know the difference between groups. Then one, when one needs to prescribe an exercise program versus education um, or dish out a chocolate versus nothing, I can just imagine how any therapist will be able to suspect a difference between these groups. If Nala is a chocolate lover who believes in the well-being chocolate can give, not being blinded may lead to unintentional biases in the way in which someone from the control group is approached when the intervention is delivered. From changing in energy, excitement, to body language and tone of voice. And the same goes for how she may approach the chocolate group. Again, this is a challenge in physiotherapy research where we deal with complex interventions. One way around, around this is to train the therapist delivering the intervention so that he or she delivers the intervention in a consistent way. Let's call the assessor Sarabi. If Sarabi knows who received the chocolate and who did not, she may, she may be biased in assessing the outcome measures. She may be unintentionally encouraging Zazu while he's completing his five kilometer fun run, giving him words of encouragement because she believes that the chocolate is giving him an advantage. Assessors who are not blinded were known to round up or down numbers that they recorded on their own, depending on their own biases. Blinding of assessors reduced detection bias. But when using self-reported outcome measures such as perceived exertion, then Sarabi will be considered blind if the participant, Zazu, was blind. Ensuring that the person who is doing the assessment, in other words, the person measuring the time to complete the five kilometer fun run, is a different person than the person giving the treatment, in other words, the person dishing out the chocolate, is a way to blind the person who is doing the assessment. Also, using objective outcome measures is important, such as runners running with inertial sensors to measure their speed, rather than recording it from a stopwatch. Now that you know what the major influences of bias in trials are, be aware of bias and how it influences the treatment effects. Spend your time reading good research.